Hi! In this video demonstration, we're going to take a look uh, a little bit further into the cat motion animation tools, uh, and I'm going to show you how to blend between several layers of animation. Uh, up to this point, we've taken a look at cat motion and how to get our characters kind of walking uh, really rather quickly with some procedural tools. We've also taken a look at using absolute uh, layers to create pose to pose uh, animation. Uh, directly uh, into our timeline. Uh, today we're going to take a look at blending between one or more layer, two or more layers of cat motion animation. Uh, first things first, we're going to go ahead and select our, our rig node here and kind of come over to our motion tab where all of our tools uh, exist in this location. Uh, just a quick reminder, the setup, bo uh, setup slash animation toggle button here is this nice big red guy. Uh, will not work until we've actually added an animation layer uh, to our layers window here. Uh, so we're going to need to go between setup and animation mode, setup for building the bones and you know customizing shapes and, and building your rig in the first place. And then we need to swap over that animation mode in order to do any of our animated uh, actions. Uh, in order to do that, we add one of these down here, uh, animation layers, and we've got four to choose from. We've talked about the cat motion layer. We've also talked about absolute layers. We've even added a, a local uh, or a world adjustment layer to uh, bring our arms down to the side and you know kind of adjust some of the actions for things like our cat motion layer. Today, we're going to talk about creating one or more of these layers and blending between them. Uh, so first things first, let's add an absolute layer and go ahead and turn on that animation mode. Uh, I had some miscolorings on my rig here, so it kind of reverts back to uh, the generic colors that it had there. Uh, that's okay. Uh, if you've added any sort of textures or anything like that to your bones, uh, which I do every now and then just kind of get those custom colors uh, rather than using the bone color itself, uh, for this you may want to remove those textures in order to see some of the great tools that CAT gives us. Uh, in order to do that you just uh, maybe double click the pelvis node, your, your center of gravity, and you can remove any materials you've added by coming over to the utilities tab, uh, clicking on more, and finding the UVW remove uh, selection here. Whoops, I just removed it from the window. It was already there. Okay, and then down here you'll be able to remove uh, any materials that were originally on those bones. Okay, just a quick little extra. Uh, back to animation. Let's go to our motion tab here. We're on animation mode, which means now that we can start uh, doing some form of animation. Uh, if you're going to be adding more than one layer in your animation, it is good practice to go ahead and rename that layer. Uh, let's call this one uh, uh, Head Scratch or something silly for right now. And you've also got the option to change the layer color here, which is going to help us out uh, seeing for our blending here in a moment. If we go ahead and choose kind of a nice bold color, let's choose like a yellow uh, to get us going and uh, say OK in that color swatch location. Uh, then we can come over here, turn on our auto key, and just kind of maybe pull his uh, arm up and up to his head. And we'll get him to make it sort of look like he scratches that. Oh, before I go too far, I'm going to undo those actions. Uh, I want to move my keyframe slider down to another frame. Let's go about frame 20 to do this. And then start rotating and moving uh, my character's arm uh, into, into place here. And maybe his hand, his palm will we'll, we'll move down there a little, a little too high so we can we can adjust as we go. A little carried away there. There we are. And then maybe his palm got a little bit too far, so we'll just kind of pull that back uh, up and in and out. And we're not going to do you know any fancy animation today because the point to this is our blending of our layers. But now, as you can see, we'll have uh, kind of uh, an animation going on from his T pose there to his head. We might even come back to frame zero and uh, pull this all the way down to his side uh, so that he's not uh, completely crazy. And then maybe in the middle here, we'll uh, we'll start moving his uh, arm a little further back so he doesn't cut through his head. That's a little bit better. And we get some some decent arcs happening. There we go. I'll probably also go ahead into frame zero and pull the other arm down so he doesn't look so T posed. Uh, and then we can go ahead and turn our, our animation off, and we've got part one to our animation here. 
Uh, now, doing one action is great. Keeping things separate on layers is a wonderful uh, little thing there. It looks like my animation name didn't hold there. I'm going to head scratch, rename that just to be sure. Uh, so that so that we've got our single animation, but only one thing's happening here uh, on our our layer. Uh, in the future, we would probably do some other things like kind of you know move his head uh, back or forward, like he's a little bit puzzled. And we could have you know quite a bit of stuff up happening. We could even turn his legs and his uh, his whole body, like what's going on, and we get some some new and different uh, things happening. That's good enough for our demonstration purposes today, however. Now, along with his head scratch, perhaps he's going to put his hand out to, to shake another character's hand here. Uh, and we can put that in an, on an entirely different layer. Now, if you want to add layers, uh, to do this right, you'll want to go down and select the available option underneath our layer. Otherwise, you start adding to the layers, more like adjustment layers, and, and things can get a little bit confusing. So I like to select that available, come down, and we're going to add another absolute layer underneath there. Uh, you'll notice this one, you know, renames the default animation layer and gives you another color and all that stuff. Uh, so right away, I'm going to come down to the color swatch, and let's make this another uh, bold choice, maybe uh, from yellow to red here. Uh, two very bright, very bold colors will allow us to see some of the changes that we're about to, to make here. And we'll call this uh, uh, our hand uh, handshake or handshake layer. There's one word there, handshake. Good. And we'll, we'll name that layer as well. Now, the way cat works is any animation I do underneath here is going to kind of override uh, the animation we did in the first layer. Uh, we build from top down here in 3D Studio uh, Cat, so whatever animation was here, it's going to load up first, and then it's going to overwrite it with whatever's here in our new animation layer, which right now is absolutely nothing. But if we turn on our auto key, and perhaps I uh, uh, pull his arm out here, and twist his palm out, Oops, I did that again. Let me see. Let me undo this. I want to move my uh, timeline out a little bit first. Otherwise, we don't have any animation. Wrong bone. There we go. Uh, arm, and maybe adjust his palm to uh, see that. I can select all of his fingers at one time, and we can uh, kind of open him up like, like he's offering his hand there. And then maybe at about here, we'll kind of pull his fingers all all in there so that we get some some good uh, solid things happening here. Maybe here I can kind of uh, bend that arm up halfway and back and we can start to you know kind of get uh, things happening not all at once but over uh, a fair amount of time. So here we go. We've got our guy. He's offering his hands to uh, the next character here as well. Uh, maybe even uh, turning out uh, his, his pelvis to, to meet or extend his arm out uh, even further there. Uh, and so we get kind of a fun different reach out animation. You might even lean forward all kinds of stuff that we can actually do here. And look as look as uh, new meat in the eye here. So we've got this animation happening. That's not too shabby. We can do deal with that. This animation happening here on this layer. Nice to meet you. Uh, but the other animation, his head scratch, was kind of, oh, I don't know who you are, and then nice to meet you. Uh, we can blend between these two layers. I'm going to turn off my auto key now that we've got our keys made for the two different animations. Several ways we can get this going. Right now we've got uh, our first layer and our second layer. We've got the uh, ability to use these weight settings down here. We can animate all of these values uh, any way we like. And we've got two options, global weight and local weight. Now, global weight's going to do everything. So if, uh, you know, by frame 20, by frame, let's say 10, uh, I want the global weight for the handshake to be at zero. You'll see that uh, uh, my first animation kind of comes back. Move it all out to zero. If I turn on my auto key and then from, let's say, zero to 20, I want to raise that to 100%. He'll start 
start to reach for his head and then oh wait no ah never mind here's my handshake I can go ahead and wait until frame 10 to start this and we can do some oh hey and we can get some two different actions kind of blended in the same manner here uh, one thing that's really nice about this is that we can actually color our skeletal structure here our rig by the color of the layer uh, this button up here is our rig coloring mode, looks like a little stick figure of our bones. If we click and hold that, we've also got the option to choose by layer. At frame zero here, we are all yellow, all that first head scratch layer. And by the final one, we start to see that blending take place. And by frame 20, we are 100% into the handshake mode there. So there's uh, two ways to blend layers, and you know, different uh, timing down here on our timeline would uh, make that a little bit more successful. We've also got the ability to blend locally, and because I did animate everything between frame 0 and frame 20, uh, we may want to use our local weights there this way. Uh, if I go ahead, you know, I can always kind of come down to the handshake layer here and select my keyframes and move them out to not even start. Uh, until frame 20. I would have to make sure that I select the entire skeleton here. Move those out to about frame 20. So that, you know, what's going on here? Oh, hello pelvis, what'd you do? There we go. Okay, we get that uh, kind of head scratch and then moving out. Just like anything, we'll have our, whoops, our, our blended layer here uh, that we've got starting at 10. We may want to keep at zero all the way up until 20 so we'll go from zero and then at 40 we can raise that global uh, weight layer and then we get the the double action here but it takes over completely and puts all things back to where they were when we use our global weights the entire skeleton is uh, is done there let's go ahead and we can actually jump into our curve editor by clicking the little button next door here uh, and go over to these uh, different curves for our head scratch or handshake and I can actually get rid of all of the blending uh, blending keyframes that we've done there so far so that right now we are back to our just our our head scratch uh, because it's set to a global weight of zero putting that up to a hundred and we'd be just in our keyframe handshake I'm gonna take these uh, these weights for my entire skeleton, select all of them, and move them back to frame zero as well. So we can show you a couple of different tools here. All right. We've also got the option to do local weights. Now, if I go ahead and I say that the local weight for my handshake layer here uh, for the root bone of any part of his body, if I take his shoulder here, that's going to change everything for his entire arm, shoulder all the way down, just like his pelvis would do the whole body, his leg would do each leg uh, all the way down. So we don't have to do this for every single bone in the body. We can take this first one, and I can take the handshake layer's local weight down to zero and you'll see that uh, rig color change to say okay this arm is now controlled locally with nothing for our handshake layer so we end up getting both of these guys uh, together at the same time which allows us to blend uh, different animations create different animations and then later on we can use those animations uh, together to create uh, entire new shapes here we can animate the local weights uh, as well uh, to to take over only partially uh, here and there. We can do it for different points of the body, all over the body, and then have all of these weights kind of blend together uh, at our own times here. We've also got the ability to uh, do our layer ranges. Uh, so if I don't want, just like we have our animation, both uh, layers between frame 0 and 20 here, we've got the ability to kind of move the ranges uh, over as well. So for our handshake layer, if I don't want it to really start until frame 20, I could just uh, reorder the keys. That can take uh, some doing if you've got a whole lot of bones with different animations on them. Or I can come in with these cat features and kind of open up in my uh, dope sheet uh, here to just take the transform the position uh, or those weights and, and tell them to kind of uh, scale a little bit differently. For our handshake layer I can kind of pull this so that nothing happens until frame 20 without really messing up 
any of that other animation. Get rid of that so you can see. Now we're starting at frame 20. Regardless, our keyframes get moved over uh, without worrying about it. We've also got the ability to do the same thing by grabbing the entire range down here underneath our timeline as well. So we really can do some, some fun things, blending between the layers uh, as well, do uh, more than one animation in a single cat uh, layer group, and play around with some of the uh, global weights and local weights to get them happening all at the same time. All right.